Rob Davalashvili steals Paulo Costa's smoothie at the UFC PI. I saw that. Thank you, Paulo. Paulo Costa secret juice. I stole from here. Making his UFC debut last weekend, Igor Severino bit his opponent Andre Lima. Igor was disqualified and immediately released from the UFC. The Nevada State Athletic Commission also withheld his purse. In an interview with MMA Junkie, Igor says that he's very regretful for his actions. He said it's been crazy, some crazy days. One day I was fighting in the best promotion in the world. I was making my dream come true. The next moments I'm banned from the promotion. I come from humble beginnings. I've been working since a very young age. I left my home as a teenager to come over to train to get here. Then to see all of this go away in the way it did, it's something that's not a part of me. It's not who I am as a person. That's not who I am as a fighter. I just feel very regretful. It makes me very emotional and sad about it. My dream became a nightmare overnight. I'm very regretful to my opponent. I apologize to Lima, to Dana White, to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, to Sean Shelby, who spoke to me after the fight, to Mick Maynard, everyone in the organization, and the fans. Sorry to everyone who was watching that on TV. They didn't deserve to see that. I remember everything that was happening until I got hit with something really hard. I watched the video later and I thought it was an elbow. From there, I was on autopilot. I don't remember anything. You could talk with anyone that we've fought or with anyone who has promoted one of my fights. I've always fought with respect and laid it down in the cage. I've never done anything outside the barriers of the sport. To me, I couldn't comprehend what's going on. If you look at the fight, many people came to me and said, hey, you were winning the round. Why did you do that? I watched the video and yes, I think it was one round apiece. Or you could say I was winning. There was nothing that could justify me biting. I did something wrong. It's right that I'd be punished. I got cut. I think that's one of the worst things that could have happened. The commission withheld my purse, so I'm not even sure if I'll get paid anything. I'm not sure what they're even going to decide, because this money isn't even for me. It's for my whole family that depends on me. Fighting is how I make ends meet. How am I able to pay my rent? That's how I'm able to pay for medicine. It's how I'm able to take care of my sick family members. How can I support them to buy food as well? That's all that I know how to do. It's all that I have to make a means to live. George St. Pierre discusses what it's like fighting Nick Diaz. I remember when I fought Nick Diaz and he's talking to you. A lot of guys, they throw haymakers at him yeah. and they, they hit and he's like, I can't say on camera what he says, but <laughs> you hit like a <laughs> Come on, and he, he's insulting you and it, man, you feel claustrophobic. You're like, yeah. I just, I just put my hard jab and he's laughing at me. It's all a fake. It's all, it's all part of his strategy. Prepare for that. I know that even Ferraz, my coach says, be ready to go five rounds. You're going to throw some crazy good shot and he's not going to blink. He's going to make you believe that doesn't hurt him. Daniel Cormier wants to see Islam versus Dustin Poirier next. Islam is finally understanding something I tried to tell you guys a while ago. In order for Islam to truly get to where he needs to be as a champ, he has got to have those familiar names on his resume. Conor McGregor, he knocked out Jose Aldo to be the champion. It was an amazing tool to springboard him into superstardom. He was already a star because he had just beaten the greatest featherweight of all time in the manner in which he did it. Islam has looked damn near unbeatable. And I know from experiences how good he is at mixed martial arts. The dude is phenomenal. But we have seen Dustin Poirier do things over the course of an entire career that is unexpected from him. Nobody thought he was going to beat Benoit Saint-Denis. He did it. Conor McGregor in the rematch, he did it. He's made a career of overcoming obstacles. This would be the biggest one of his entire life. Robert Whittaker gives his take on Ian Gary declining to fight Michael Venom Page because he's not ranked higher than him. Rob says he can understand where Ian is coming from. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Like, I 100% I understand where Ian Gary is coming from. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure I've said things similar in the past. Like, I want to go up. Hmm. And the the main way of doing that is fighting guys higher than you but then you reach a point where you are at the top and then you yeah. run you run out of guys ahead of you and that's when you start fighting everyone in between hmm. but I, I i understand where he's coming from i can i can see that mindset yeah what do you what do you do could you imagine yeah. if Ian Gary happened to beat MVP? That would put Ian Gary, in my opinion, very close to the, to the conversation, if not right in there to get a title opportunity. 
definitely and that's that's one of the things with the ufc it's like taking on those hype fights mm. fast track you they, they they just do i can see i can see ian gary if he beats michael page getting maybe a top three guy you know mm. and then fighting for the belt after that like that's how that would work but i can also see him you know forcing is forcing a a, a a top five fight next fight as well just because of uh, right like his persona but mm. uh, it's hard to say the ufc works in mysterious ways james kraus has been posting to his verified facebook page he has been absolutely silent on his other social media since 2022 as most of you know by now james was under investigation for irregular betting activity the ufc recently sent a memo out to all of the fighters about betting on sport not being allowed to bet on sports this past weekend there was an investigation launched on the minner and shyland fight because the line movement went crazy in the hours leading up to the fight what can you do to even further safeguard uh, the, the integrity of the sport when this kind of thing happens? Yeah, I mean, th this is one of those things. There's absolutely zero proof that anybody that was involved bet on it. In his Facebook post today, James is promoting his real estate coaching group. In the post, James wrote, I'm in over $5 million of debt and don't lose a second of sleep over it. Last night, Sean Strickland had words for Dave Portnoy. On X, Sean wrote, my girl watches TikTok, sadly. She keeps showing me Miss Peaches, the barstool sports guy's dog. And I asked my girl, does this man have kids? No. Let me tell you all something. If you're a grown ass childless man, obsessed about a dog, you gotta rethink your life, rich or poor. He followed up with, okay, I went too far. I'm sorry. Your dogs are your kids. I know, I know. As a man who loves his country, I just see the sickness that has infected us. The men before us built a nation, fought world wars, had pride, God. What do we have now? Boys with dog children. Dave fired back with this video. He wrote bad news for Sean Strickland. Miss Peaches didn't die this weekend like he was rooting for. Sucks for you, Sean. Dogs over humans. Michael Chiesa also had words for Sean. He wrote, if you're a grown childless man hating on someone for loving a dog, you gotta rethink your life, rich or poor. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Joshua Mendoza. His man Strickland is being more and more of a diva. The I only fight to fight because I like to fight and nothing else persona is gone after the fame and fortune. The second one says Sean acted like he didn't care about the belt. Now he's been crying nonstop because he lost it. And the final one says, Sean Strickland is proof that it's easy to judge people like Izzy when the spotlight isn't on you. Because as soon as the spotlight has been on Strickland, it's been showing how much of a hypocrite he really is. From crying about DDP trash talk to this. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.